Welcome into the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boost. Ruto, AJ, Blaze coming at you in a game that feels a little bit too common. I feel like we've been here before. We definitely have been. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Dub's making house calls all the time. High scoring dubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shortage of goals in Dr. Dub's bag today. Abs win seven to five over the Philadelphia Flyers. Friars. In a game that for, for Friars. Certainly could have been easier, but the Avs still took care of business. So Yeah, I mean I think uh could we just cut to this now? I, I we probably don't have it set up on this computer. <laughs> Do we out uh, here? Do you know? Oh, there it oh, is. Oh, we do? Amazing. So this pretty much sums up the entire game, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, that is a dog taking a poop on center ice. <laughs> Just so we're clear on, on what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was so... Here, let's talk about this to start. The Avs scored seven goals tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the defense that played tonight played a regular season game in December. So, <laughs> uh, I want to talk about the offense before we get to the defense. Because the Avs did score seven goals tonight, but this one felt a little bit more... Uh, it was a full team effort on the offensive side. It wasn't, oh my God, Nazem Kadri and Kale McCarr <laughs> yeah. carrying the hell out of this team, right? Yeah. So, uh, is that, I mean, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Because, yes, the Avs are getting quality depth scoring, but at the same time, Nathan McKinnon still hasn't scored a goal. Yeah, he uh, definitely a body language. You could tell out there yeah. that he was not having a night at yeah. all. So, he was, he was definitely not frustrating happy. for him, but you got to. Overall, like the Avs having scoring that much depth scoring, like multiple people with two point nights. Obviously, when you score seven goals, you're going to get that. But seeing it throughout the lineup is great. And the way that they scored, I mean, there was some good goals scored from most of the lines tonight. Wow. Yeah. There were some beauty snipes from Landy had great shot. Yep. Kadri had a maybe the best shot of the game. (laughs) EJ had a ridiculous finish. Yep. Uh, Tyson Jost had a ridiculous finish. That one might finish. be tied for. Yeah, that, that one was, was insane, a too. Beautiful goal, too. Uh, so the only one that wasn't super pretty was New Hooks, I guess, with the the deflection off the defenseman <laughs> kind of nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But look, the Avs have zero problems in the production department. I think that much is pretty much clear at this point. They're in their last what 10 games now like they had the one game against dallas where they only scored one i guess and besides that i think they've scored at least four in all of them (laughs) so yeah he's gonna have to learn how to finish a little better if you want to call him that (laughs) i don't know they say gretzky couldn't lift the puck so what do i know uh yeah nuke had a well all right so nukes is it an uber elite snipe where he banks it off the post off the goalie and in? Doesn't it, it went in. Are we giving him credit for the super snipe? Yeah. It sure. Went in. Let's go. Give it care. to him. Okay. It went, it went Give in. the man some dues. Yes. The power play went three for four on the night officially. Yeah, crazy. Um, don't. And, and the Evs had four special teams goals. There were. Six special teams goals in this game. Two shorthanded goals. Bro, you would never know the Avs won this game by some of this comment section tonight. This is crazy. I don't know what to tell you, man. They can be mad. Uh, I mean, certainly there were imperfections. No we, doubt. That we'll yeah. get to. Like, yeah. You don't give up five goals because you're playing awesome hockey. But also, there are some things. There's some context there, you know, that... Yep. The Avs trailed for, what, five minutes of this hockey game, if that. They yeah, they gave up yeah. the first goal and then took the lead and, and led all the way through, even if it was a little sketchy at times. Yeah, I mean, certainly, look, the, you're up 4-1, it gets to 4-3. You're up 5-3 going into the third. And it's and it gets, early 5-4. And, it, and yeah. it gets to 5-4. You're like, dude, what the f- what's going on here? <laughs> but... Like they finished. Yep. 
And if you go and you look at the shot metrics and all that stuff, it's going to be a little deceiving because I was telling you guys, the Avs are plus 11 in shot metrics when they score their seventh goal. And then after that, Philly really put the foot down yeah. and really started to generate some chances. And it's like, oh, well, when you're down by three with seven minutes to play in the third period and that's when you really get your foothold into the game, boy, howdy. Well, and you man. look at it in every period. Yes, it was 4-3 after the first, but the Avs outshot Philly 14-8 to in the period. I, I I don't know what the final was for the second period, but it was 7-2 to two at one point when I checked it. So it's not like the Avs weren't controlling this game. And a lot of the things I think you would take repeats of in this game, the only thing that you want to see them really tighten up is that defensive puck management yeah. because that's where... There was some bad turnovers yeah. in the defensive zone. That They're definitely yeah, like some sure. of their puck management tonight was brutal. Yeah. Like it was it that, led directly to goals against well, some chances first against. Goal. I mean, just brutal, brutal play yeah. with the puck. And then you go and you look at the defensive lineup and you're like, Okay, so you've got three guys you really trust with the puck and Gerard, Taves, and McCarr. Yeah. And then you've got three guys, you've got two guys that you absolutely don't trust with the puck in Jack Johnson and Curtis McDermott. Yep. And then the last guy is Eric Johnson, who, <laughs> Total on, <yo. laughs> who on any given shift, you have no freaking clue anymore what you're about to get. Because he was he was all over the place tonight where there yeah. were some I mean the goal the goal that he scores is great. He saves a goal later Literally on. Literally saved a goal. Save. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. with the does a great job there. Uh, I think he picked up an assist. I'll have to double check, but I think he picked up I, an assist. I think yeah. you're right. And like like there were moments like he unleashed a bomb of a, of a one timer where we were like, <laughs> where my gosh, where did that come from? <laughs> and then there were there were some of the some of the same like just brutal turnovers. Brutal. And- <laughs> Puck decisions with where the it's puck like, what are you bad even turnovers doing? Yeah. and losing losing battles that that you should definitely be winning uh especially as a bigger guy you know he loses he loses uh, uh, uh the battle to the front of the net to cam atkinson yeah who's my height <laughs> like it was just it, like with ej it's just so up and down yeah. and you're like man this is this is definitely what this is definitely what you need Bowen Byron for to really like stabilize. If you're things, gonna play, yeah. if you're gonna play the kind of balls out, like go hard kind of offensive uh, assault kind of defense that that Colorado plays, where they're so aggressive on the rush and they're so aggressive uh, activating offensively, you need guys that make good decisions. You need guys that can activate it when half your defense I- can't. It's problematic for you, and it leads to some issues because forwards are expecting certain things, and now they're having to double back and this and that. And like, it's there. There's a lot right now that needs to be cleaned up. I wouldn't say they're major problems, but I would also I would also point out. And I'm jumping the gun on this point, but I would also say you're two one and one on a trip in which neither of your top two goaltenders nice. have played one minute of <laughs> yep, this trip yeah. for you. Yep. So, and, and both of them appear to be likely short term Kemper back, taking shots in practice, still on the trip. Frankie has Frankie, two games under his belt. Frankie got his two conditioning yeah. games and could easily rejoin the abs at the end of next week, or I guess the end of this week. Now, one of, one of those, the second of those games is, was a shutout. Yep. So like, you know, and he gave up three goals in the first period of his first game back and he hadn't given up a goal in the five period since. Yep. So you're talking you're talking about with with Frankie you're feeling a lot better there with Darcy Kemper as a short term injury you're feeling a lot better there you're two one and one on a road trip without one second of play from either your first or second string goaltenders now I know that there are some big mad people about Colorado's planning for their goalies or whatever but you're surviving with third third and fourth string goalies right now like getting lit up imagine that. Like these guys aren't in the NHL for a reason. We talked about used to saying it and not being ready for the NHL yeah. for a reason. Now you wanted to give him, you wanted to give him a start because why not? Like just throw He's him in here, there. You might as well. Yeah. Let's like throw him in there. He's here. You're you're in a situation where it's not like Jonas Johansson's playing so well that you just leave him in the net. You play on and in. He's not quite ready. You outscore your problems. You win a game. Yeah. Great. <laughs> right. The point is, is that you won the game. Yep. And and it gets he gets experience. Yeah, and he gets a, a he gets a taste of game. 
gets a taste of what it's like, but also you're looking at it and you're like, look, dude, if you have if you have a legit NHL caliber guy, a guy that belongs in the NHL right now, this is probably a seven to two game. Yeah. Yeah. And I of agree. course, yeah. of course, if you're on the other side of things, if you have an, a legit <laughs> NHL caliber goaltender, who knows how this many is of those probably seven go a in. three to two game. <laughs> yeah, like who knows, right? But like with Ananin, like Ananin is 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 just not ready. And this is the thing. This, when you give up five goals and like outside of the fifth goal, like you're looking at some of those and it's like, look, like you get big saves for a reason. And they all come, all of those big saves come on defensive breakdowns. Every team has defensive breakdowns. The abs, I don't think, and I'll, I'll pull up the numbers here in a sec just to double check, but I don't think that the abs gave up more scoring chances or high danger chances than they normally do. It's just that again, when you're not getting saves, everything looks worse than it is. Yeah. Yep. It's it's absolutely true, and I think, honestly, this is a great not only experience for Anandine, but he can take the tape on this and go, okay, clearly I can't have my five-hole gaping open anytime <laughs> the puck comes across the ice because yep. he got beat twice that way. And however yeah, you feel on. about the other goals, it's, it's great experience for him, and he gets to go back down to the AHL as a winning NHL goaltender. Yeah. So... I, I have oh, no problems for that. Just to follow up on the point, because yeah. I said... Just you got the, the numbers. Numbers-wise. Yeah. All situations. This counts everything. All the chaotic nonsense <laughs> on special teams back and forth. Scoring chances, Colorado with a 31-20 to 20 advantage. And giving up 20 scoring chances is a really low number in the NHL. Especially at all situations. And eight high danger chances for each team. Both of which are right around league average yep. for a game. Yep. Well... It's actually both of those, both eight is below league average for uh, all situations. That would be fine for 5v5. Um, you're right. But all situations, eight on eight, not a lot of high danger chances than uh, for either team there. Yeah. So all of this, oh, the Avs defense is terrible. The Avs, the Avs this, the Avs. Goaltending is, why, the, is what covers all of that up. It papers over all of that. If you'd stop getting 800 goaltending, all of a sudden you're like, wow, the defense is so good. It's just how it works. Yep. Yeah. So this wasn't a worse defensive performance than on average, but it's certainly like you don't feel good about it because you look at the breakdowns where you're it's self inflicted wounds it, more than it's which which like how do you balance? Like do you feel better about a self inflicted wound versus the other team just whooping your ass? Uh no, I don't know which to feel better. But I mean, you know you can fix the self-inflicted. And that's kind of right? my, yeah. is like, you watch the tape, you try and get better at that. Now, yeah. there's a limit there because there of are course. a handful of guys that you aren't sure should be in the NHL right now. Yep. But guess, like, every team is going to have to deal with that. You're dealing with that. Right now, the biggest area where the Avs have guys who shouldn't be in the NHL is in net. Agreed. And I feel like yeah. that's what's showing up biggest. More than all this, like, Curtis McDermott bullshit that everybody's losing their minds about. Like more than any of that, like you need some saves here and there, yeah. and you're not getting them. Everybody likes Eustace Annan, and everybody's rooting for Eustace Annan, and so nobody really wants to drop the hammer and say he played like shit. But I can be the bad guy; I'm fine with it. He's. I thought he played like shit. I thought it was a bad night for him. It, it's also his first NHL start. This, I'm not writing him off as a future goalie. I'm not going to speed bag him or anything. I just don't think he played very well. I certainly wouldn't play him two days from now, and. But that's fine. And against yeah. the Rangers. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I was happy he started tonight. I wanted to see how he would do. If he played well, I would say, hey, play him against the Rangers. He did not. Yeah. Uh, we can sure. Get, we can get. Well, let's see if it works this time. Last time it didn't work, but we have audio from Eustace talking after the game. So. Can you hear that chat? Let us know. Okay, so they I'm, can't. I'm guessing they can't, can't hear, hear that, that at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll have to fix that because yeah. that's the same problem we had last yeah, time. Very but. quiet. Yep. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Yeah. No. We'll get that fixed eventually. I promise. I swear to God, we'll learn how to do our job someday. <laughs> but look, when you're a poorly shot pod, what can you do? <laughs> all right. Well, 
for now, we are brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. So go use code DNVR and get yourself a ton of money. I made plenty of money on Kale McCarr anytime goal scorer tonight. So go get that. All of my money rests on the Nuggets game tonight. <laughs> oh boy. What what you you got a good ones going on or what? Um I picked them because I picked the Nuggets just straight up because they were dogs. Because they have Jokic and they were dogs somehow. Yeah, exactly. Um so I picked I picked the Nuggets straight up. I also picked uh him to triple not a triple double but to break 45 point rebound and assist so i was picking a big night so for like a catch. 30 bomb or something yeah and i have absolutely no idea how he's doing so and then i picked a couple of like small prop bets on other players nice. like I, uh, uh zeke Naji and stuff so. i might i might have hit all of my bets on yeah you were hot you were hot tonight <laughs> that miko two assists i'm not quite sure how you managed to make it to that one yeah but. yeah i just willed that into existence <laughs> <laughs> He didn't even know when it happened. He was like, yeah. "Who got that assist?" I was like, "Ranting," and he's like, "Yes." <laughs> I wasn't even sure I he was. My I, bets. Was so I wasn't even like, sure he was playing tonight. Yeah. Really, until that second he, assist, he kind of went to invisible mode, but it, <laughs> it worked. Uh, hit on over to DraftKings if you want to get a bunch of free bets when you sign up for a new account with code DNVR. You can bet one dollar on any NFL game for a team to score a point. <laughs> they don't even have to win; they score a point, and you get a hundred bucks in free bets. So jump on that. It's free money to play with on DraftKings, and then you can bet on whatever you want with it. Super fun. Uh, you must be 21 or older, Colorado only. Other terms, restrictions, and uh, other things apply. I don't know. I, I lost my train of thought. Go get the uh, app go. now. The NFL is an official sports betting partner of DraftKings. And, of course, if you have a problem, call 1-800-522-4700. We're also brought to you by Breckenridge Brewery. Uh, I would love to have a beer in my hand right now, but I still can't drink with my wisdom tooth getting out. It's very, very sad. Sucks because uh, we had the free uh, yeah, free Crown free Royal. Free Crown at yeah, the bar the crown, tonight. Crown rep yeah. came through tonight. Yeah. I'm me, drinking uh, <laughs> me, being, me having gotten two hours of sleep and been up all day doing things meant that I was just, I'm not taking that not chance. Not going there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I, was, I was laughing about that too, hitting the over in the first period. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. He was he was having a giggle on that one. Uh, but hit up Breckenridge you Brewery. Right. You can get eight different <laughs> beers on tap here at the DNVR bar, or find them at your local liquor store with the Breck Beer Locator online. Bunch of amazing beers for you to try. They have a beer for everyone, but personally, I like all their beers. So just go with that. Uh, and right now. It's a great time to get signed up for a DNVR annual membership, not just for the abs coverage, which is pretty good, by the way. You know, <laughs> we kind of have everything clicking. We gave you except for the pod, and even the pods clicking. The, uh, the it's pod just audio, very specifically, the pod <laughs> audio has some issues. It's also but, poorly shot. Well, you know what? Maybe poorly shot is our vibe at this point. So. Whatever it is, we got a lot of it. All right, just like tonight, we'll have grades. We'll have you a, a post game. Uh, article i guess i don't know what you call that i don't even i don't really know it's like our post game piece yeah like this game happened and then here are some thoughts about it yeah i don't really yeah well, i don't really i don't really know what to call it anymore it's not a recap deep we don't, thoughts but we don't deep we don't thoughts by aj we don't recap the game and i definitely don't do deep thoughts <laughs> there have been some games where i've been like Let's get philosophical. <laughs> this is not one of them. You also have my reviews, which are just getting longer and longer because the abs <laughs> won't stop scoring goals. <laughs> yeah. You're giving late, them up. Like, yeah. you're a late night tonight. Yeah, for you. it's going to be another long one, unfortunately. <laughs> Nobody is looking forward to March when the abs are winning three to two every night. Like more me. Than I'm like, Rudo. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I cannot wait for boring hockey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we we like to think we make good content. You can also check out the Nuggets and Broncos beats. Uh, they got a bunch of awesome stuff as well. The Rams beat is vibing right now with their new head coach in football and their basketball team somehow still undefeated. Yeah. So did Zeke Naji have at least twelve points and it doesn't rebounds look like, combined? Doesn't look like it. No. Yeah. I mean, probably not. But <laughs> probably a pretty tough bet to hit on that. On that one. But yeah, I I don't know. I, it seemed like free money, but I should just bet yes on the triple double. I had the tinglys, and then I was like, I'm tired of losing money, <laughs> so I lost a bunch of money. Uh. Anyway, second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Let's get to our king of the game here. You know who it's going to be, even if he played like shit. Yeah. Uh, the dude not only got his first NHL win, he also got his first NHL point as a goaltender. Yeah. Uh, and it was also his first official NHL start. So 
Yes, I saw someone in the chat a long time ago said it. He has more points than Curtis McDermott this year. <laughs> that is correct. So he's living the dream right now. Yep. Congrats to Eustace Sandin on his first career win. Hopefully many more to come, but not this year. Give it some yeah, time. Yeah, we, had, we <laughs> had some discussion about who the king of the game was going to be. It was between three people. Well, two people and an, an animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, one, I think... A, a fair conversation on why we struggled so much is our other one was like, should, should we get it to EJ? He made that dope save. He had yeah. a dope goal. It's like anyone we can give it to had like a critical error yeah. in this hockey game. Yeah. Kale McCarr had that horrible turnover for the fifth goal. <laughs> yep. I know that goal didn't really mean anything, but still. The, uh, Eric, Eric Johnson saw his, the Avs had 20 scoring chance against tonight. Yep. Eric Johnson on the ice for 11. Eesh. Wow. Eesh. Yeah. So... Wow, that's a lot. Some tough <laughs> sledding with our king of the game <laughs> candidates. It's it's weird to have a king of the game, and it's like he let in. But also, yeah, <laughs> we considered that as the king of the game as well. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. had that. That was that was the animal. <laughs> we had that conversation yeah. about yeah the the, the dog pooper. Yeah, it's, uh, appropriate for this game, I would say. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so I haven't even seen the the Scott Lawton goal. I haven't seen the turnover because I was writing grades at yeah, the time. It, I just saw I just saw Ananin's five hole just yeah, yeah. Macar part like the Red Sea, and Scott Lawton was like, "All right, I guess." A puck <laughs> skips on Macar at the blue line and like got off of his stick and out of the zone, and oh. he's just flat footed. Two man attack, yeah. yeah, poke check to another guy. You give up three or four of those every year, where it just there's, yep. There's not a lot. I mean, the same thing happens to Claude Drew in the first period. And you're yeah, just like, where he fans on one and it's yep. like, oh, no. <laughs> and yeah, where you're like, okay, well, this is the downside of power plays. Yep. And like holding the blue line is that <laughs> if you make a mistake, you're in trouble. Um, I, You led us to a topic that I wasn't going to go to next, but we're here. So are are we in agreement at this point that Logan O'Connor's shorthanded production is just sustainable? <laughs> like. No, <laughs> there's no way it can continue it's, like this. It's not, but also it's so crazy. We are literally five weeks into the abs can't keep scoring like this. <laughs> yeah, it so, just keeps happening. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I genuinely, it's been such a weird ass year that I just don't even. It's just like every time it's shorthanded too, and there's something like that happening. You're like, yep, twenty five is out there <laughs> <No>. somewhere. <laughs> Can you guys decide whose fault that last goal is so I know who to be mad at? Jeez. We've got we've got Makar, we've got McKinnon, and now we've got Ranted and Chad has decided it's all three guys' fault. I okay, whatever. It, Who's whose fault is it, fam? I blame the dog. Uh no, we we kind of were jokingly having the conversation of like if LOC keeps up the shorthanded production. Give him the selkie. <laughs> uh, does a guy yeah. force his way into a selkie conversation <laughs> On if he has 15 shorthanded points? Maybe. Uh, I mean, it's it's just a shorthanded points is just a stat you don't really think about until a guy is doing something like Yo, this. Yo, I'm, like, I'm about to pick up Logan O'Connor in fantasy just for that because <laughs> we, we, count, we count shorthanded points and basically get double for every yeah. one. So just do it. That's a gem then. Yeah, exactly. Tiffany's point they showed on the broadcast too. The Avs defense has actually passed their total at five on five for goals from last year already. Yeah. Uh, the Avs defense is pretty good at scoring goals. And more specifically, goal of the year candidate for Kale McCarr. Was that goal better than the new hook goal two nights ago? I don't think it was. I don't either. I don't either. I thought the new hook goal was better. But I mean, just from like a skill level, what what Kale did out there tonight. Everything that everything that McCarr did before the shot is like pretty standardish stuff. Yeah, but the shot it's itself. really really bad defense yeah. and it's a re- it's really awful zone entry. It's really lazy hockey. Yeah. And then you get to the shot where you're like to elevate it that quickly and not have it just go sailing like have it go <laughs> yeah, straight and, espe- yeah. and especially coming from right to left yeah. as you're going around a guy to be able to elevate it cuz like you'll see a lot of guys make that move yeah. and they usually just put it into the pads and hope somebody's there to just basically pick it up and score he comes around that guy <laughs> Going from right to left and then elevates the shit out of that puck. It's, yeah, it's unreal. I mean, it, it's high skilled. 
just be in the shot. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not that big of a deal, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like with mccarr like it's just a it's an amazing shot like yeah. you're just like dude what the yeah what is this do you guys do you guys ever see that uh that video years ago where david blaine is on the street and he's performing tricks and the guys are responding the guys are reacting to him and the one guy just keeps going what the f <laughs> what the f <laughs> every time kale mccarr does something like that what i the hear f? i hear that guy's voice in my head going what the f david blaine <laughs> was this your guy <laughs> where's oh. the puck it's in the back of the net Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that's how I feel about it. It's because I'm just like, yeah. I don't yeah. even like there when when Makar does certain things, man. There just aren't words where you're yeah. just like, yep. oh, okay, you're a fucking freak. We he get did it. it. Oh, he did it again. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy, man. It's and and like he's scoring all the goals that Nathan McKinnon isn't right yeah. now <laughs> because no, that's kidding. the kind of thing that we see Mac do. Yep. Yes. Yeah, somebody has seen that video. I, awesome. That YouTube video, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Uh, that's so I'm glad I'm glad other people remember that video it's from such a weird like corner of the internet. A long, yeah. long, long time ago. I was watching last night, I was watching a Bub Rub mix where I was just like Bub Rub, man. Uh, what the- this is from this is from when I graduated high school <laughs> level of internet. So, uh, good time. I mean, yeah, the, every team's always going to respect Max, still, right? Yeah. But Kale McCard is just kind of doing it his own thing right now. And yeah, yeah. McKinnon had that great assist too. It was great. Yeah, pass, yeah. Great read. And and the other thing with McKinnon is that like he produces right, and he yeah. he gets a point like that. His line drives play. If you go and you look at the numbers, they're driving play the way that you want to. And then you watch. If you just isolate just McKinnon, you're like, this guy's a frustrating player, man. Like, he makes a lot of mistakes. He does a lot of things that... That kind of leave you annoyed, you know. He yeah. he tries to he tries to dance Claude Giroux, uh, and and gets it stolen. And it creates a chance the other way. He has what looks like is going to be a sure breakaway, and he can't get it. He, he can't get it through Travis Sandheim's skates, and yeah. you know, and it, it, it's just like there are certain things where you're like, some of this is going against him, and then he'll make like uh, Martin Jones makes that gr- really yeah, great save on the mask, power play in the yeah. third. In the third period, with he, he gets him in the mask. It's like it's a great shot, man. Yeah. He just Puck's Martin, just not going in, yeah. Right. If Martin if Martin Jones is is an inch to his right, you know, if he slides just a little like that much more, man, that's a highlight real goal, and yeah. Mac is back, right? Yeah. Like it, the the dam is open, the floodgates have opened, it's all coming. But like he's frustrating because there are mistakes that get made in the game where you're just. He drives so much play forward that there are so many opportunities. You think, how many opportunities did a guy like Tyson Jost have in the offensive zone tonight? I remember one, and it's the one he scored on. (laughs) Less because he kept turning the puck over. But even (laughs) even a guy like even a guy like Alex Newhook, if you want to use a different example, how many how many how many like good just not that many. How many like good like in transition opportunities and breaks did that line really generate? Like not that many, which is normal. Yep. And McKinnon drives such an abnormal amount of play that it feels like he's playing worse than he really is because he's just a freak of nature in his own way that has the puck in the offensive zone all goddamn game. <laughs> I think part of what makes that frustratedness out of McKinnon's game, though, is McKinnon is such a competitive guy that he expects everything he does to work every single time. Yeah. And when it doesn't work, you see him kind of go, ugh. Yeah, he, he gets, it's he, eating at him. He definitely gets pouty pants way too fast. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's a body language thing that really frustrates you. <laughs> but when it's going well, you're like, yeah. He has 19 <laughs> points in the last 10 games. Like, I don't give a shit. You know, like, I can live with all this. <laughs> but it's... It, it could definitely be, yeah. He's he's struggling to score right now. But if he's going to struggle to score, 
right now is the time for no him to kidding. be struggling, well, and, right? And, like, and, and the, the rest of the team is picking up the slack. Like, they're dropping this, seven Remember the, the thing? Yeah, like, like remember in years past where it was and, like, and, if the top line didn't score, the game sucked. Well, and like, <laughs> like, like, for most NHL teams, yeah. if your best players aren't scoring your goals, you're probably not succeeding very right. much. Right. You're yeah. probably not scoring very much. Yep. For the abs to be doing what they're doing is dumb. Yep. <laughs> but like, they're also putting up seven points. In right. Game. Come on. But they're they're also like Mac isn't scoring. McCarr has what now eleven goals. Well, eleven. He's yeah. scoring forty. You like, heard it here first. Like, <laughs> like Landy. No, he's not. Landy. <laughs> Landy scores on an awesome shot that we see him make twice a year. Yeah. Yep. You know, just don't ever see that goal from Landeskog. Ranted in picking up two assists along the way. Like they're they're finding goals and McKinnon is part of this. It's just he's not the actual shooter right now. And you know, now I think he had eight shots on goal tonight. He came into the game with a two point nine percent shooting percentage. Yeah. Yeah. So that whatever whatever the eight shots on goal with no goals did to that, <laughs> it just can't continue to get much lower. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. In the same like, way that there's gonna be these a, other things aren't sustainable. Well, yeah, there's, there's gotta there's be a, gonna correction, be a time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's gonna yeah. be a flip where uh, where like McCar goes a month where he scores a goal and McKinnon has eleven in that time. Yeah. And it's just gonna be like like you're you're almost never gonna be living in a world where it's all happening at the same time. <laughs> The abs are living in that world right now where it's all happening at the same time and Nathan McKinnon is shooting 2% yeah. and they are scoring seven goals a game. <laughs> it's realistically yeah. like four and a half right now. It's, I, it's it insane. Might, I think it, it still might be over five. Yeah, like, it's, <laughs> the, it's just it's so unbelievable the way, that, the way that they're getting going. So it, it, you, For the live, record. you live with it, but you also know that like there will be the balance yeah. will eventually yeah. come. Like, yeah. If Nathan McKinnon scores one goal this entire year, stays healthy the rest of the year, and he has 80 assists or something stupid, right? 70 assists. You're just like, well, this is the dumbest statistical season <laughs> ever. And then he'll get into the postseason and he'll score nine goals yeah, in the first yeah. four like, games okay. of, a, of a postseason series. <laughs> yeah. They'll sweep somebody. And half of the abs fan base will be like, whoa, whoa, go to the second round again. Big fucking whoop. And <laughs> Nathan McKinnon will go and win the con Smythe because he just breaks a bunch of records because it was just going to happen. Well, right. Like the, it's going event. The point I'm making is that it's going to happen. It's yeah, a, it's, it's inevitable, inevitable that a guy with that much, that much shot generation and that good of a shot speed, just, yeah, just everything. It's yeah. gonna, Total it's just going there. to happen. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's one of those things like for the record, the last team to score over five goals a game in a full season of 80 games, at least, was the 80s Oilers. Yeah, so. and I don't who, think... Who was on that team? I don't think... <laughs> just a couple of bums. <laughs> I don't think four has been done... In a long time. Any man. time in the last Since 20, the yeah, dead puck era, years, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not any time. Not any time in, like, most of my life. Yeah. 90s, 90s trap game. Mm, yeah, maybe yeah, maybe <laughs> like it might have been like early 90s yeah. like penguins or something like i just teams just don't it's a three goal league for yeah. a reason yep. yep it's just reality so yeah and sunday with this sunday florida and colorado are gonna go 10 to 9 yeah <laughs> just full <laughs> nonsense hockey like that's gonna be chaotic but at a certain point my review will just be shorter if i just post the whole hockey game <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that legal <laughs> probably not probably not uh so anyway ride the good stuff while it's good it at the end of the day you're getting your two points yeah it, you're two one and one on this road trip you've played your third and fourth string goaltenders you right are guaranteed there. at least a 500 road trip there are 10 points at play on this road trip. And you've and already you've got, got five. Yeah. Right? Yep. With a max of with the max, max of coming seven. seven. Yeah. 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 Uh, abs are in second place in the central too. Yep. It was funny Z last night was like, Oh, Winnipeg's back in second. And I was like, Yeah, there's some games in hand here. <laughs> I was like, this might last twenty four hours. It did. Yep. Yep. It's and that's that's part of this equation still is the abs have a, a bunch of games in hand. Yeah. Uh we have some super chats we can get to here. <laughs> okay. Uh, twenty bucks, very generous of you, Colton. Uh, uh shot time. Love you guys. Can't drink uh when I can drink, yeah. I'll get you back though. I 
promise this weekend, I think Friday. I don't know if I'll be able to drink yet. Oh, I won't be here Friday, but maybe Sunday's game. We'll make it work. Yeah. We'll we'll get you up. One of these one, on one of these drinks. games we'll do we'll do a, a solid like two rounds of like easy shots. Yeah. Like make easy, it work. Easy shots. <laughs> easy shots. Uh next we have Tommy Thompson. Thank you for the five bucks. Is it me or does Miko look lazy and lost doing any type of defensive zone work? Um I don't I don't really know. So, all right. There's a bunch of caveats to this because for the past two weeks, the abs has just been saying, screw it. Let's play Miko at center. Right. And you kind of just live with what you get when you're yeah. doing something yeah. like that. And and now he's back on wing and he's readjusting to that role. Yeah. And they're also playing these ridiculous, high scoring, weird games that these guys have never played in the NHL. Yep. Nobody plays yeah. like this. And like, Miko's not a defensively, like, you're never he's asking not, him to like, do a ton. Not, that's yeah. not his first thing that he's it's not. It's all. not great. You're just asking him to be passable. Don't make the big mistakes. Don't make lazy. Just you know, don't yeah. make lazy yeah. mistakes. Uh, if you're gonna make an execution error, then that's one thing. But don't don't let the lazy stuff kill you. Yeah. Yep. And I think they're doing fine in that area. But certainly, Miko's a guy whose game. Defensively, for sure, uh, I mean, he really just, has a lot of variance uh, we, to we've it. We've talked about it before, though. Too Miko is the type of guy that will have games where he just kind of puts along. You, yeah, you don't really notice him, and then he's got two points at the end of the night, and it's like tonight. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just how he operates a lot of the time. Yeah. So, uh, one more super chat here from Blake. Thank you for the five bucks. This '80s hockey BS is stressing me out. Doctor Dubs in the house. <laughs> it's a lot of goal scoring, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, not, I am not used to that as a '90s kid. Uh, this is weird. <laughs> this is a bizarro world for me. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, just because the abs are sitting up by two, two or two plus a lot of the time. Yeah, I wouldn't say in not super stressful. Yeah, man. this hasn't really been that stressful, but it's been like. So much is coming against them when they have leads that yep. it's like, how do you how do you feel about it? Like it's 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 so much easier when you're three one and you go into a third period and it's boring and it's dramaless and you lock it down or you collapse and the other team comes back and you know like our jobs are so much easier that way because trying to figure out the context of how to feel about. Yeah. Okay, well, a team has a three-goal lead with five minutes to play. <laughs> like, how much? They can how much, hear us like, still, like yeah. how much do you care about that? You know, about right. that last goal against? Sure. You're like, yeah, this is dumb. This is lazy. This is bad. You don't want this. Do, do you, how much do you care about it? The three goals that they gave up oh, in the third hello. period. The three goals that they gave up in the third period in Seattle when they're leading right. seven to right. nothing. Yeah. How much do you care about well, them? Yeah. It's, and I just don't really have an answer to that because I'm like, I don't, but also you don't want to give those up. Right. And and it's it gets weird when you're in a situation like the Avs are in now and it's like, okay, this is the seventh time they've done this in the past month. Yeah. So it, it's almost like you're falling into a routine of this. And you know in the back of your mind that this can't keep happening. But as long as you're riding the wave... You just kind of sit there and go, well, if they're still winning games seven to five, they're still winning games. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, especially with your third and fourth string goalie. And, well, yeah, and, and you yeah. can't blame it all on them, right? There is no, a lot of defensive all. breakdowns that are happening back there that you would love to see cleaned each, up. Each of these games, except for the Toronto game, we're like, oh, the, like, what are you going to like? What's yeah. JoJo do about this? Yeah. Or what's Annan and do about that? You know, like the first goal tonight is. Just a bomb, like, like yeah. Claude Drew the turn, with the yeah. one timer, where yeah. he just goes a bar down on you, and you're like, "Well, what do you do about? Don't turn that? over that yeah. puck and, and have two forwards fly the, the zone, the, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you, you just don't really. Yeah. yeah, that's that's. But also, you know, if they stopped at that, if if they had stopped it, even if you give him the breakaway goal at the very end, yep. And you're like, oh well, I, I don't need a save on breakaways for some reason. <laughs> That's still three goals against you where you're just like, well, don't feel like I could do anything about that. And it's like, you need a save somewhere right, from yeah. a guy on yeah, a on a great scoring yeah. chance like that. Like, you just need him somewhere. I mean, the Avs literally lost a playoff game last year because they couldn't get just that one 
extra save. Yeah. Where, you know, you don't you don't point to any one specific goal and say that one. Yeah. You just say, look, dude, you just it's not fair. Like being goalie is hard, but you just need a save somewhere. And that's kind of where they are right now. But they've out they've outscored so many of their problems. It's fine. Uh, if, and if you look at Kemper though, like past performances, right? When he was with Arizona, yeah, he made those stops. He definitely he did it against the Abs one year. Like, yeah. until, the damn, more, until the damn until the damn bro. Well, yeah. yeah, but there was a game that he stole because he stood on his head. Yeah, yep. he he outdueled Frankie, and he I mean, remember game one of that series entered the third period zero zero. Yeah. So, you know, like they're like, he's perfectly capable of it. Yeah. But he has to be in the net to do it. And, and yeah, exactly. the other, the other thing being that he just hasn't played that well. Yeah. When he's been in. Yep. All right. Well, when you enter the third period, zero, zero, make sure you're perfectly capable of scoring in the bedroom <laughs> with Manscaped to get 20% off with code DNVR and get free shipping. When you get the perfect package 4.0 Manscaped has all the tools that you need to take care of all of your body hair top to bottom. They also have a bunch of other stuff like body wash and shampoo and all this stuff. So you can be smelling good and feeling right. Manscaped has you covered. Next, check out Strava Craft Coffee, the CBD-infused coffee that has really helped with many different things, whether it's migraines, aches and pains, like joint pain, IBS, a bunch of other stuff. It's great for that, and it's also still, you know, coffee. So it works for your caffeine fix, too. You can get it down here at the bar, cold brew, if you want to try it before you buy. When you love it, you can get 25% off with code DNVR25 on your first purchase. Last, but certainly not least, we're brought to you by Hassel Cattle Company. You can get... 10% 10% off when you use code DNVR10, and they have all the meats you could ever imagine, whether it be just your simple Wagyu beef burger, which is delicious, don't get me wrong, but you can also get things like tomahawk steaks, bone-in ribeyes, all sorts of deliciousness that you just can't go wrong with. So check out Hassle Cattle Company today. They got great meat top to bottom, and you can get free shipping if you want to get a group order going. This is what we always do. We get everybody in. They'll each buy like a steak. You get up to 200 bucks. And then you get that free shipping. Okay. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. All right. So let's let's get into some of the negatives here on the defensive side. Because, AJ, I think you kind of talked about it. For the most part, it doesn't feel like a lot of laziness. It doesn't feel like you can just work harder and fix these problems. It feels like the Avs need to... Uh, it starts with better decision making with the puck, right? Oh, you got to be able to make a, a effective pass out of the zone. The puck management in general. If the Avs are, if the Avs want to play what they want to, the 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 style that they do, the aggressive breakouts and the uh, the offensive activation and the aggressive driving through the neutral zone. I mean, you just have to you just have to play better than you have. Yeah. You know, I don't notice a ton from Taves or Makar. Um, most of the most games, I don't notice a lot of problems there. I don't notice many problems from Gerard. There have been certainly there have been some games, but overall, I don't think Sammy G has been bad. I don't think he's been as good as he was last year, but I don't think he's been bad i mean we had the conversation tonight where he fended off a guy skating back into his own zone turned around and got it out and and that's the type of thing that sammy g does on a regular basis it was a little scary to watch but yeah yeah. i mean it's a first one he won a bit of a high wire act at (laughs) times but when you see jack johnson try and do that he gives he he coughs it up you see jack he ices it he turns it over he falls down he gets it stripped he does you know all any number of the negative things that could happen in that situation regularly happen to jack johnson you see sam gerard do that and you're like ooh, that's a little spooky you see jack johnson start to do that and you're like oh no 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 yeah yeah, your don't whole, do that. your whole internal monologue, like it just pops up. The word bubble just pops up above your head, and it just goes no. <laughs> well, some of that too in the defensive zone. It's like when you have a high skilled team there, you start to kind of get, I'd say, a little lack of days cold with your passes. Well, and you you'll, cheat a you'll little. see, yeah, you cheat a little bit, and what you do see is like some very ill advised passes to the center of the ice from a backhand position where <laughs> you can't really see the ice as good. If you're on your forehand, right, you see a little bit more of the ice. When you're on your backhand, it's limited. 
And they're making cute passes in the middle because they think that the skill is going to make up for it. And that's when you see some really bad turnovers from yeah. the defense. Well, and this was tonight. Again. I was I was frustrated with Tyson Jost before. And I told Roto, I was like, yeah. dude, you got to bench him. He, he yeah. made two awful two turnovers. Defensive yeah. zone turnovers awful. that turned into legit scoring chances yep. for the Flyers. And... Like I don't, I don't care that it's it's six four at that point, right? Like I, that's how that's that's how it gets to be. Six there's five. there's stuff yeah. that you just it doesn't matter what the score is. You just don't do Dude, that. Yeah, like you just you have to manage the puck better. And I think you know uh, one of the guys that I really thought struggled that we don't talk that we won't look too much about uh, on a mo- most nights would be like Val Nichushkin tonight. Yeah, he had a yeah. lost a lot super, of battles. Super in the defensive rare to zone. see him lose any, and he was struggling and just did not look, did not, was not as on top of his game. Maybe he Nichushkin looked at his best with the puck tonight. Yep. Yeah, which, which is weird. which is never his <laughs> yeah. strength, never the true strength of his <laughs> NHL game. So you know, I. I cer- I certainly hope I certainly hope that Nuke is not getting complacent at the things that have made him successful because he's now scoring points. Right. And he starts to think I can give here because I can I can put a little more into this area sure, or that sure. area. I want you you definitely want Nuke to continue to be who he has been that's made him successful. Yep. Um you don't want him cheating a little bit and tonight I thought there was some cheating. I thought there was a little bit of cheating from Berkey. I mean, I, although I think that that's probably just par for the course right now. Yeah. Um, with, I think my really big problems tonight, like McDermott didn't play well. Um, no. And I don't know. I, I didn't have a problem with him two nights ago. I really didn't. Um, tonight. I, tonight was bad. There, there, there were bad decisions. Yeah. There's not, there, there's almost no physicality. Man. Like you think about, uh, who is it that he hit I last know. week? He hit somebody and just yeah, put dropped. a charge into somebody. Yeah, yeah, and and I don't know if I don't know if he actually hurt him, hurt him, but whoever it was like left the game for a little while, and it's like that's physicality that you need him to bring because that's one of his assets. Yep, but he just he didn't he he's not bringing any of that. There was none of that tonight, uh, and then Jack Johnson. Not very good. And Eric Johnson's defensive numbers, again, like he's getting yeah. absolutely run yeah. over and over and over. And I think we're I think we're seeing a hard and like, look, there was a reason tonight that Eric Johnson got dropped. Yep. Uh, next to McDermott and away from Sam Gerrard yep. because EJ's played his way down the lineup. The problem is, is that now you're elevating Jack Johnson and giving him but, some of those minutes. And he can't like you... The the thing with like the their defense and like it was oh it's so stacked it's so good is that EJ is the fifth guy finally right. puts EJ in a role more appropriate he's for not his a problem yeah. for his current skill set yeah. and you don't have to overplay him you know without Byram and then with the Murray injury those two are really important injuries because now instead of picking between Murray and Jack Johnson every night Jack Johnson's a regular for you and Jack Johnson's honestly been okay this year. He's been passable. There's very little upside, but he's mitigated he, all he's of the downsides. Entirely passable as a number six. Exactly, that plays yeah. it's low event as possible. It's completely, like, he's com- he will drive zero offense for you. Yeah, but he's limiting horrific nonsense against, and this is provable by a bunch of data. The problem is there's no upside from Jack Johnson. You are just surviving those shifts. Yeah, yep. and when he's out there next to Sam Gerrard. He's out there as a really thick anchor around Gerard's neck, yeah, ankles, I whatever. Mean, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know where you put an anchor on a human. I, I was starting to think about it, and I was like, where does an well, anchor go on a person? I don't know. I mean, that's the problem is EJ in the defensive zone right now is an anchor to whoever he's tied to, too. Yeah, well, and then and then McDermott and EJ just kind of feed yeah, into man. where you're just like, oh, my gosh. Because... Where where do you get where do you get some help here? Because Jacob McDonald isn't it. That's another offensive guy that's not gonna play defense for you. Now he fits your intended style, your intended mold of 
I want, we want to push you, it up ice. We yeah, want to go. Can you imagine? We want to break out, but he doesn't play any better way, defense. If you put the way EJ played tonight next to Jacob McDonald, that's a heart attack in a box. <laughs> 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 There's it's, just no good answer right now with the with the depth that they have. And, you know, low-key have not talked anything about it, but Dennis Gilbert was having a really, really good start to the year for the Eagles. Well, yeah. he, was playing, he was playing the kind of two-way game that he'd never been able to play before. And he was bringing that physicality for the Eagles. He looked really good. Uh, him getting hurt, I think, really stopped a possible, yeah. like, this guy could maybe help you in a limited role well, here in this type of scenario where he comes up and he doesn't hurt had, you as much as a McDermott is. Had he been healthy when the Ryan Murray injury first came through, that would yeah, have been the true. moment, right? Like. And, and well, and then also the other injury down there was Justin Barron, where you wonder, yep. like, had Barron been able to play, had he been healthy this whole year and he'd been working on his game and all that, you start to wonder, do you give him a look at some yeah. point? Now, this is these are early season problems, and you hope that Bo gets better and that they're able to get their, really, their solidified top four in place for an extended period of time, because it hasn't happened once this year. Yeah. They haven't gone a week with that group. They, Fine. They've played... Two games and a period with yeah. their proper top four. So I would say I, I would say that you need you kind of just need to get through this bow stuff. Yep. Um and then whatever will be from there. And then like every other team at the deadline, you're going depth defenseman shopping. Yeah. Yep. Or if you really wanted to 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 do something a little bit bigger or bolder, you go and look at a guy like a Josh Manson, you know, like a bigger name that's an expiring UFA and blah 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 blah. But for right like right now, you need you need these guys. You need your you need your stars to be your stars, and they are on defense. Taves and McCarr are awesome yep. right now, yep. and Sam Gerrard is doing just fine. Where Sam Gerard's Sam Gerard's biggest problem is the same thing that he had in the postseason last year. There's no support. He's having to carry his pairing. And if he gets if he gets somebody that he can really vibe with, that can play on his level, that he doesn't that he have to just drag well. around. Exactly. Yeah. He can really I think he can really help them in a much more meaningful way because right now it feels like whoever's next to Gerard probably isn't gonna have a great night, but not because Gerard Gerard just isn't isn't the guy that's going to hard carry a pairing. And he's more of a really high end complimentary guy yeah. who needs another high end complimentary guy to help him. Byram is not that Byram is a total fucking star. I mean, yeah. it's, and Devon Taves it's, becomes that guy. for yeah, Gerard. Uh, That's Devon Taves to a T, right? Yeah. Like it is the, the real answer here is you need Byram to ascend the throne, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get next to Makar, and then have Gerard and Taves as your two, your yep. second pairing, and then your third pairing. You're really just like guys, just don't fuck this up. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Just yeah, like just two don't good just, players. Yeah, just play your fifteen limit minutes mistakes. Tonight. Yeah. I swear to God, just limit yeah. mistakes. That's all it needs to Stay be. Stay at home defensemen that don't cause turnovers and bad mistakes in the defensive zone. Yeah. You're good. But Shane Gostisbehere doesn't play any defense. Well. Dude barely plays hockey at this point. But. I mean, he's... I know he's had a bit of a resurgence. But. Yeah, he's been great for Arizona for their anemic offense, but somebody has to score the points down there, right? Uh, their one goal that they score yeah, every game. Yeah, it's not in a lot of scoring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just... it's Right now, their biggest thing is puck management, but part of their problem is that half of their defense, that's where you're looking at it, and you're saying it's, this just isn't great. Yep. You're just trying to get by with half the D. Yeah, and you know if you have a guy like a Justin Barron on the horizon, where you don't do it right now, but maybe you consider Justin Barron post Olympics, if he's continuing you know, on the right trajectory. Yeah, yeah. where he he's going to be playing in the AHL that entire time. They're going to have a chance to to watch him up close every night, work with him, talk with him. You know, the Olympic the Olympic break, assuming the players still go and that that break happens, because right yeah. now. I mean, it's it's, it's on it's, technically. It's yeah, <laughs> it's just it's it's a fair question right now. But if, assuming that it goes through, yeah. that's an that's an opportunity for the organization to really get a good look at Baron and decide what do we want to do here. Yeah. So and and these are short term problems because if you fast forward a year, both Justin Baron and Drew Hellison, you're hoping, are helping to address this. Yep. 
maybe at not, least starting to work their way right in. Yeah. Yeah. not not answering that problem but helping to address some of this yeah. so we'll see but the the puck management surely is is problematic man i know jared bednar is gonna be pissed he, about that. that's I, the type of thing that bednar hates <laughs> He the, he's it. he his answer is he'll he'll take the other team running Colorado over self inflicted wounds. Yep. Yeah, he can't stand when his team he watches his team beat itself. Yep. Okay. Uh, any final thoughts here on another ridiculous hockey game? I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm out of things to say. To be honest with you, <laughs> two points. I mean, great. <laughs> yeah. You got. You can't be mad about the two points. Uh, can the Avs just outscore all of their problems? I guess. Right now, the so answer far. is yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's really just problem. It's, it's yeah. not. It's pretty like, singular. They've got yeah. some. They've got some defensive issues, and their PK sucks. But like, but they also all of score goals things, on their PK yeah. half the time. So. All of those things get better if you have a legit goaltender. Yeah. True. Uh, duo. In Absolutely that true. So yeah. a week for a week from now, it could be Kemper and Frankie, and you're just like, well, that feels a lot better than <laughs> Johansson handed it. <in." laughs> You hope. Yeah, you yeah. definitely. <laughs> you like, hope. Like, look, if those guys let you down, then you just, you made a bad valuation. Yeah, yeah, but like, sure. you you rolled the dice, a reasonable roll of the dice on those two cats. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. We're going to wrap this thing up. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. That helps us out a bunch. I saw some new people in the chat. Hello. Nice to see you. Hope you'll stick around. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with our normal show. Uh, and then, yeah, game on Wednesday. So you know the drill, pre-games, post-games, all that stuff. We hope to see you at those shows. Until then, we'll talk to you next time.